Hello everyone, my name is Adrian Fernandez and I'm here to talk about the ADS-1118 uh, booster pack from Texas Instruments. Uh, this particular booster pack features the 16-bit analog digital converter, um, the ADS-1118. Um, and that particular booster pack offers uh, multiple input channels. So we have a few of those channels uh, accessible through this booster pack. Um, one of them being this thermocouple connector here. Um, and the booster pack comes with the uh, K-type thermocouple, so you can immediately start playing with this probe and start measuring temperature very easily. Um, we also have a few screw terminals, so you can input um, an analog source there and measure it through that channel. Um, and then we also have these uh, these test points here as well. Um, so multiple interfaces for you to immediately start playing with the ADS-1118 uh, analog to digital converter. Um, and that ADC um, communicates to a target microcontroller over SPI. Um, so that's the interface that we are going to use um, with this particular uh, launch pad here. So uh, these two um, work very well together. They plug right into each other um, and immediately our launch pad can start measuring temperature data coming from the ADS-1118 booster pack. Um, also on the booster pack are a few other components. We have a 16x2 character LCD display with backlight. Um, we have a buzzer, so that creates an audible sort of notification whenever temperature exceeds a third, certain threshold um, or maybe a certain amount of time has elapsed. Uh, we also have a few uh, configurable and reprogrammable uh, user, user push buttons there as well. Um, with the kit, um, it does come with the K-type thermocouple, so I'll just start off by plugging these two things together. Um, it's a keyed connector, so it's uh, very easy to plug it in properly. Um, there you go. Um, also with the uh, booster pack, it ships with a pre-programmed MSP430 G2553 microcontroller device. Um, so it comes with some firmware preloaded in flash um, specifically for this particular booster pack. Um, however, I'm going to show you how to reflash your microcontroller, um, you know, just in case for whatever reason you, you program over that demo application um, or you've somehow erased it. Um, the, uh, the, the TI team that brought this uh, booster pack to market um, also provided the uh, binary file for that particular example as well, which makes it very easy for us to, uh, to flash it back into memory. Um, so in order to do that, we are going to have to download the software package, uh, which is available here on TI.com in the uh, product folder for the ADS-1118 booster pack. Um, on this page, you also have the user's guide. We also have a quick start guide. Um, both of which I have open here, so you can download that and, and peruse um, if you need additional information um, on this particular product. Um, but the software section is uh, a little bit further down the page, and you can go ahead and download this right here. And it's basically just a, a zip file. Um, and the zip file includes several things. I've got it opened up here. Um, it includes the Code Composer Studio uh, source project. So if you want to uh, open up that source uh, file and actually look at the code, um, modify the code potentially for your own use case. Uh, you can do that in Code Composer Studio. Um, but inside of this folder um, is the uh, the binary files. So here we can use a tool called MSP430 Flasher uh, to simply load that pre-compiled binary into the flash memory of the microcontroller plugged in. Um, and what they've done is they've created a batch file here. So it's basically a, a pre-scripted executable. Just go ahead and double click on that. And as long as your launch pad is plugged in over USB, um, the, the scripting tool should be able to find it, um, identify it, and immediately start flashing code into the microcontroller. So we'll just go ahead and double click on this batch file here. And we should get a window pop up. And here you can see it's trying to find the launch pad, um, loading up the appropriate firmware um, into the device. So there is very little human interaction. So here we do have to press any key to continue. So we'll go ahead and do that. There we go. Now it's actually loading up that uh, binary text file into, into the flash and uh, it should be done. So then when I hit the any key to continue again, it closes out. Uh, and that basically notifies us that the code is, is fully loaded into your launch pad. Um, great. So there's a few things we have to do here on the hardware side. Um, there's two jumpers down here uh, which connect the red and the green LED of the launch pad. Uh, we actually want to remove those. So I'm just going to pull those out um, and move them down here. Uh, just leave them on the table. Um, and, and that way we don't get any sort of pin conflicts. Um, we also want to rotate these two jumpers here. So this will 
tell the Launchpad that we want to use the hardware-enabled UART as opposed to a software-enabled one. So all we have to do is remove those two pins, and we're going to rotate them horizontally. Um, and that will basically configure our Launchpad to use the hardware-enabled UART. Um, and that's going to allow uh, communication between the Launchpad and a uh, PC. So we're actually going to report back uh, temperature data through the USB, uh, which you can monitor through a hyperterminal. Um, and there you go. So now I can actually just plug in this Brewster pack onto my launch pad. Plugs in just like so. There you go. And um, you might have to hit reset, and that should start code execution. And there you go. So we actually can see the uh, LCD display is working. You can see my real time uh, temperature data there. Um, so 26 degrees um, Celsius. But when I actually touch the thermocouple tip, uh, the temperature does increase um, appropriately. So you can see it works pretty well. Um, also, on the uh, the booster pack, again, there are a few buttons here, so I can actually um, change between degrees Celsius and Fahrenheit. Um, we have different um, configurable modes. There's a timer mode here, so I can set a certain amount of time, and once that amount of time has elapsed, the buzzer will buzz. Um, or I can set a temperature threshold, and right here, this temperature threshold is set at 100. Um, so that's a bit high, considering that I'm in the uh, Celsius mode here. Um, but if I press, I believe S switch, oh, which one is it? One of the switches here should allow me to so here. You can see I'm jumping around between those digits there. Um, so that'll allow me to configure the threshold. The threshold here was just set to zero. Um, and that's why it's buzzing at me because I'm above zero degrees Celsius. Go ahead and turn that off. There you go. So I set the threshold back to 100 degrees Celsius and now it's no longer buzzing at me because my instantaneous temperature is below that threshold. Um, and there you have it. So it's a very easy to use Brewster pack. Um, it, it, it really comes with a nice sort of application of specific out of box experience. Um, one additional thing is if you do want this to be untethered on a power standpoint, you can unplug it. And we do have this uh, new battery booster pack um, that's now available on the TI eStar as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug that in here. There you go. And now we have a, a pretty nice sort of launch pad or booster pack sandwich. We've got the MSP430 G2 launch pad here. We've got the uh, battery booster pack right here in the middle, which has a rechargeable lithium polymer battery. Um, this booster pack features two BQ devices from Texas Instruments, one for the fuel gauge and one for the, uh, the rechargeable uh, battery circuit. Um, and then obviously we have the ADS1118 on top, and you can see it works just the same, um, except this time I have no, no power uh, cable since I'm running off of the battery. Um, so there you go. That's the ADS1118 booster pack from Texas Instruments. You can find more um, on the Launchpad ecosystem at ti.com slash launchpad. Um, and thank you very much for, for watching.